respected guests and participants ladies and gentlemen good morning i welcome you all on behalf of the department of electronics and communication engineering to the second day of the fdp internet of things welcome back with the spirit of show must go on the next distinguished to honor us with his presence is dr varun bajaj from triple it dm jabalpur Dr. Varun Bajaj is working as an associate professor in the discipline of electronics and communication engineering at Indian Institute of Information Technology Design and Manufacturing Jabalpur India since July July 2021 he worked as an assistant professor in Triple IT DM Jabalpur from March 2014 to July 2021 he is an associate editor of IEEE Sensor Journal and subject editor in chief of IIT Electronics Letters He served as a subject editor of IIT Electronics Letters from November 2018 to June 2020. He is senior member IEEE June 2020 uh, Letters from November 2018 to June 2020. Uh, MIEEE 1520 and also contributing as active technical reviewer of leading international journals of IEEE, IET and Elsevier etc. He has 138 publications which include journal papers 88, conference paper 31, books 9 and book chapters 10. The citation impact of his publication is around 3500 citations h index of 31 and i10 index of 74 uh, that data we have taken from google scholar december 2021 he has guided seven uh, phd's out of which four are completed and three in progress seven mtech scholars and he has been listed as the world's top 2% researchers and scientists by stanford university usa in the uh, october 2021 He has worked on research projects funded by DST and CSIR. He is recipient of various reputed national and international awards. His research interest includes biomedical signal processing, artificial intelligence, IoT in healthcare, brain computer interface, pattern recognition, ECG signal processing, etc. Dr. Varun Bajaj sir is going to address the gathering on the topic role of signal processing in IoT based healthcare system. sir it will be a privilege for me to invite uh, you for your knowledgeable words please yeah. sir welcome thank you, sir thank you thank you so much thank so you just you help welcome. me about yeah. welcome welcome varun sir good morning yeah. very good morning to all of you so today the topic is uh, role of signal processing in iot based healthcare systems so here i am little bit odd person because i am working in signal processing and brain computer interface so i will try to in co- these cope up with these uh, in connected with these things with uh, iot devices so as you already know the basics the last uh, the first day you have uh, idea about the basics of iot so i will uh, tell you about uh, how the iot can be beneficial for healthcare system how the system can be developed and how you can start your work in iot the main motive uh, how you can uh, work on these devices and how you will get the data and how you can process because uh, here i am considering most of the faculty has joined and maybe some student so how they can start their research on this particular area and uh, uh how they can uh, get some devices or how they can get some publications so that is the main motive of this talk so as in this talk the content of this talk uh, is first we will talk about uh what is the iot then we will talk about iot in healthcare then what do you mean by the telehealth systems then what are the challenges advantages and disadvantages of iot in healthcare then what type of iot based devices are available then what is the role of signal processing in iot then i will take some example how i have started that research so that you can also move forward and you can start your research for the for solving some particular problem then the result how we can find out the result and how we can uh, justify our re- result by using uh, some performance parameter then conclusion then references if time is permit then i will tell about uh, what research activity is going in my lab so nowadays uh, iot as we already know the platform is re- where the regular devices are connected through the internet so uh, they can interact they can collaborate and they can exchange their data 
तो इफ्स वी टॉक अबाउट द सिंपल एग्जांपल ऐसा ना हो मेरा मोबाइल पकड़ ले क्योंकि वहां पर मतलब फिर पता है time uh, it's a reduce the time it's a less time consuming method because somebody will come in your college and deliver the lecture so it will take too much time but nowadays there are iot platforms are available so this is one of the best example of iot so you can understand how iot works so this is one basic example zoom platform so like iot uh, in healthcare it's a basically a heterogeneous computing and a wireless communication system app which can be connected with the patient and health provider for diagnosis purpose monitoring purpose tracking purpose or storage of vital statics or we can say that it's a medical information can be stored so these are known as iot in healthcare means healthcare we are for different there are lot of diversity in iot systems they can use for diagnosis purpose they can go for the monitoring suppose somebody is in a uh, required continuous monitoring so iot devices can be used for monitoring purpose few examples like handset major uh, uh, brain waves like eeg dp monitoring so the things are previously also available but what is the difference in iot in healthcare in iot and healthcare they are taking a data and they are transferring the data okay so this is the big uh, difference and many devices are connected through internets like previously we also doing the same thing like you are taking a some uh, um, if we say you are taking a bp of any person but in that time the technician is present with you this is non touch non touch process but in iot you are taking a bp and the value of the bp is transferring to the healthcare professionals okay so that is the difference just they are transferring the information whatever information that device is extracting that information they are transferring so like there are a certain type of uh, healthcare uh, vital signs or statistics which can be easily transfer in iot healthcare system if we talk about telehealth so telehealth is the branch of iot in healthcare which deliver the health services and clinical information in the remote locations so like uh, in telehealth there is a one organization administration which is fda which approve these uh, all the things in medical devices uh, which can use uh, for this purpose or not so hipaa is also a complaint platform which is uh, 24 by 7 is available so here uh, the doctors are connected in uh, nation wide so they can provide a uh, some uh, information or they can uh, provide some suggestion and they can see the health of the that particular patient so if we talk about the telehealth uh, umbrella so in this particular umbrella the telemedicine tele monitoring tele surgery uh, remote medical education or telehealth data services these are the branches of telehealth uh, system so uh, we will see one by one what are the use of these devices and how we can use so if we talk about the telemedicine so telemedicine means the professional or doctors or consultant they are connected with the patient in remote location and assisting up uh, primary care of the physical physician or regarding the diagnosis of any disease what is the object of this uh, telemedicine it provide a uh, medical devices specialized medical devices suppose some doctors are sitting in the hospital uh, bombay hospital and the remote location the that specialist is not available devices are not available so uh, the data will be transmer transmit and according to that data doctor or consultant will give you the diagnosis procedure and they will tell you what is the exactly problem so uh, another object monitoring the patient condition third is 
guiding the medical st uh, staff and uh, treatment procedures. So like in the COVID condition also telemedicine is most important part. Like the there is a, some doctors which is working in the Ames and De Ames Delhi, and they need to tell the staff <coughs> what procedure we need to follow during the COVID. So by using telemedicine, they are con communicating to the different type of medical staff how what. So this is due to the telemedicine. Uh, the, the doctor also connect with the patient and. The doctor, the specialist doctor also connect with the doctor. So that is the use of, that is the objective of telemedicine. Share the data among the research institutes so that uh, the research institute can uh, develop their methods, their, they can extract the more information from the data. So that is the objective of telemedicine. How this functioning? So like video conferencing between the patient and uh, a specialized doctor, video conferencing between uh, doctors and is different type of uh, space lists, like some of the diseases we required, neurologists, different type of expert is required. So they can, by, through video conferencing, they can, uh, each other, they can uh, communicate their information and they can take uh, a proper decision. What will be the procedure for that particular uh, disease? And uh, monitoring the patient vital and aesthetic in ICU, uh, the transfer of the patient uh, medical data among the different of hospital, what are like uh, in COVID condition, we have uh, the different type of hospital, they have transferring the data. If this is the situation, then what, how, what procedure they need to follow. So this can be used by telemedicine. So there are different type of devices which can use in telemonitoring. So these are the simple devices which we are using a daily life, like uh, desktop PC, digital camera, LCD monitor, digital microscope, ECG machine, scanner. But there are some other devices which has already modified like telemicroscope. Telemicroscope means whatever the one place there is a microscope and they are taking a data and this data is they are transferring to uh, some other place or through some other uh, uh, network like tele ECG means ECG machine is the some place and they are transferring the data some other place. So like telestethoscope, X-ray machine, X-ray digital. So these are the few devices which can use in the telemedicine. Okay. Now the second is telemonitoring. So collect telemonitoring come under the, the data will be collected and through IoT. So there are two type of devices. In the example, we will see uh, what type of te tele monitoring devices are available. So tele monitoring devices, there are two type of devices. One, they, directly they are transferring the data. This is the one device. Like uh, there is a, some vital sign which you need to transfer. So directly they are transferring the raw data. They are not taking any decision. Clear? Whatever vital sign they need to they need to monitor. The say the they are monitoring from this device, they are monitoring the data from the patient and the data is transferring to a specialist. So this is a one type de devices. Another monitoring devices from the data, they are diagnosing, they at the real time they are diagnosing some disease, then that data they are transferring to patient, uh, 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 sorry, a consultant or doctor. So there are two things. When the data is transferring, then that time a specialist is visualizing that data and based on that, they are doing some process here. Clear? Another diagnostic of uh, monitoring devices where the time of taking a data from the patient, that time they are taking a decision and the decision they are sending. Whether the person having a high, low, or any other disease, so this information they are transferring. Please silent. Please, please, please mute yourself. So teleservicing also uh, include the personalized alert and perform a uh, patient uh, healthcare providing time of the physical and mental trauma. So the objective of this devices is to reduce the number of emergency departments because it will give you the alert whenever that particular disease will come. 
it reduced the hospitalization duration in a hospital stay improved the patient experience also the uh, that can use for the uh, health of uh, improve the health of the population reduce per capita cost of healthcare devices and resolve the uh, problem for limited staff suppose somebody has some hospital have limited staff but they have tele monitoring facility so the all can be sent to the doctor or single physician in the different different from the different different devices so this will be a more advantageous in tele monitoring devices so like clinical care is also a part of uh, tele monitoring devices so like iot uh, driving uh, driven some sensors and the patient continuously can be monitor so uh, sometime we required non invasive monitoring non invasive means the sensor are putting in the surface of the body or organ of the uh, or uh, the sensors are putting on that particular organ and whatever vital sign we need to observe that particular uh, data is transferring to the consultant and doctor like uh, simple example if we want to take ecg so suppose the sensor are putting in the different position of the heart like there is a ethogonal triangle for taking a ecg so the persons are in the critical condition or in that particular critical condition the EC, they are taking a ecg and this ecg will be transferring through uh, internet protocol so the ecg directly transferred to the consultant so this is a clinical care uh, how they are using a iot system so like here you can see in this particular uh, figure like the patient is uh, sitting in some other place and the information is collecting or any physiological status and this is this physiological status they are uh, either they can given in the cloud or directly they can transfer to the any caregiver or doctors so the doctor continue sitting in the that particular place and they are taking a they are uh, getting that information how the condition uh, of the patient or they can monitor another is uh, remote monitoring so like uh, in a uh, now people are working on this uh, type of devices like uh, people are in the remote locations where the health services are not available so but a specialist doctor is not available but there is a, some clinical person is there so in that particular hospital they can go and they can go for that test and that test can be sent to the doctor so that doctor can be advice for uh, medicine or he can go for the diagnosis so this is known as remote monitoring system where different type of vital signs can be acquired so if we see how we are developing how the device is working so like these are the here we need to put the sensor um, now here there are two type of sensors one is known as invasive type of sensor another one is non invasive type of sensor so mostly if we are technology person so we are looking only for non invasive non invasive means the sensor we are putting in the surface of that particular organs because invasively if you are doing invasively then you required some prof uh, trained professionals so most of the technologies are based on the non invasive non invasive means you are putting a sensor and you are taking some uh, information and that information you are processing through ordino you know or different type of machine you can use the computer you can use raspberry pi you can use microcontroller after that what type of decision you want to take either you are going for diagnosis or you that information you want to transfer to the doctor so there are different type of indicators is there like emergency switch buzzer lcd display gsm so anything based on the requirement you can connect the how you can how you can produce the output or whether you want to transfer this information to the doctor or a consultant or after processing you want to uh, convert that information or you want to send that information to the doctor so like uh, in the uh, tele monitoring so there are different type of apps also available or softwares is available which you can download in your devices and in the cell phone also can be uh, these uh, vital signs can be absorbed now the third branch is tele surgery so like nowadays uh, uh, the tele surgery is the most important part because uh, some of the cases the surgery is not available in that particular country 
so now uh, through a tele surgery su surgeon to perform the operation of the patient in the distinct location using a tele robotic technology so there are different type like uh, they are in the doctor is doing for uh, some other place and it is happening in the patient so like what they are using so if you talk uh, about the tele robotic surgery so they are using a cyber globes so basically the cyber globes having a 18 sensor placed as the critical point of to measure the posture of hand like how much hand you need to because in a surgery they need to use hand so this type of gloves is available where the different type of sensors are putting in that particular gloves and uh, the sensors are a uh, long thin strips sewn into the globe fabric that measure the change in the resistance to the electrical current as the sensor in the belt is bent bent so like there are different type of sensor are putting in the uh, in that particular hand or the according to small changes of hand like somebody is very small changes that sensor can be uh, acquire then whatever processing doctor is doing in this place the same thing will happen in the other place okay yeah of course uh, for uh, uh, directly the machine cannot do some uh, other doctor will be there so that they can also observe that these things but uh, but a uh, specialist can do this thing by using uh, by using this cyber globe so this come under the tele robotic technology so like uh, another is uh, robotic uh, medical education so like uh, they are uh, given a uh, medical education to co worker or different the different type of doctor because the uh, some geographical uh, different type of location these things are not available so uh, the medical by using in a remote uh, medical education also will be uh, can be provided by using this technology another is telehealth data services so uh, the many hospitals they are collaborating with the data science persons and different type of those are having a capability to convert that data to in in the form of some information or diagnostic system so now that through telehealth data servicing uh, uh, this branch they 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 are the hospitals are exchanging the data with the uh, education industry research firms and government so that the before that thing that some devices and some uh, monitoring devices and some decision can be made so that come under the data health uh, tele health data servicing so what is the advantage of iot if we see the uh, advantages of iot so the treatment of the disease uh, can be done before it will get from the hand and the prior information and uh, uh, you can say that uh, the early diagnosis can be uh, then another is uh, automatic data monitoring or smart monitoring can be possible by using iot in healthcare because it's continuously they are observing that particular vital sign and accordingly they can go for the uh, decision so the smart monitoring 24 hour monitoring can be possible by using this type of iot based devices patient monitoring is done in the real time so like uh, uh, suppose uh, there are previously people are using a bp in four time in a day three time in a day now the continuously they can use different type of organs like ecg so like in right now also in india we are using a uh, in hospitals we are they are using a um, different type of devices which is not stored they are not storing the data okay that is the problem in monitor so what there are different type of monitors are available where even though in ecg device also they are measuring the ecg and that ecg they are transferring in the cloud where the doctor can access the ecg in 24 hour so the patient monitoring is easy in real time okay if somebody is in a critical so there is our doctor which is observing every vital sign in 24 hour so this is the possible on, uh, with the iot another is it's connected the healthcare enable and co worker to get the access of real time information what is procedure previously we don't have access of uh, uh, this uh, if these devices are not available available then we can the caregiver and the uh, patient uh, family also don't have any information about that 
now through iot they can uh, give the information what is the uh, right now what is the condition of that patient so uh, immediate medical attention can be provided uh, and case of emergency or natural disaster also this type of devices can be used no need to uh, waiting like uh, some of the uh, systems are available which is iot based which provide the uh, this is this is the managing healthcare and this this come under the managing of the healthcare systems so like uh, they are providing uh, uh, information what time doctor will be available and so this uh, different type of software they are using for iot purpose so this uh, reduce the waiting time eliminate the need to be physically to be medical facility like somebody uh, right now we, we are not going in the hospital so there are uh, now from there are different type of devices are available which can uh, directly come in your home and they will check your vital sign and directly the same information can be sent to the doctor so it will reduce the distance barrier so reduce the it uh, yeah reduce the documentation paperwork so uh, better communication can be provided from the doctor to uh, doctor and different type of space list and the, yeah it's also a cost effective because uh, the uh, consumable item is reduced now so uh, that's why the cost will reduce disadvantage so if we see the capability of these platforms so the big ad advantage there is no till now there is no standard for tagging and monitoring with the sensors we do not right now there is no standard is available so this is the one challenge second is the privacy and security is uh, another issue because you are transferring your data and uh, some the patient uh, data the patient and doctor data should be encrypted so this is privacy and security is a one problem so somebody can hack another problem the software can be hacked by the other users and the personal information can be misused so these are the these are the endless possibilities in iot but uh, by using these uh, it can be easily it can reduce these disadvantages so these are the major challenge now security and privacy is the big challenge so people are trying to uh, uh, like end to end encryption is possible in iot device then it will be uh, reduce the uh, privacy and security problem and integration is also a big challenge like uh, uh, suppose some body is taking mri so the like uh, if you say different type of devices we need to you can transferring a few for development of iot based devices so uh, this easily it can be used and they have multiple port for taking a output so these are the uh, devices which can use initially after that once the uh, everything will be fine your performance in real time it is working then it can be converted into a smart devices so like these are the few iot based wearable devices like glucose level monitoring so it can transfer continuously uh, sorry motion detector sensor so continuously it will tell about the motion like pressure sensors is there temperature sensor is there ecg sensors is there so there are different type iot device uh, available in the market but these type of devices right now they are not taking a decision they are just transferring the data so if we talk about iot based system for uh, tele monitoring purpose so iot is the computer technology we design a project product and iot is better quicker and easier and it is less expensive here the menu manual uh, like uh, manual drafting options is also there but uh, when you have a huge data so data handling is also a problem so now if we talk about how we can develop the devices so here we talk about two type of devices one type of devices we have a device and that device you indicating a some problem 
if you are going for diagnosis of any disease then you previously you required data for that particular disease if you want to develop your diagnostic system so you required some data as from the data you require from the data you need to get some information because the huge data is there different type of frequency component is there different so you need processing of the data so data processing means signal processing signal means the data in the form of sample so that you required to process after processing you need to extract some features or common attribute then these common attribute you need to give as a input to any machine learning or decision making devices and that decision you need to transfer to the doctor or any other person so that immediately that person can go for the treatment clear so like here there are different type of wearable devices which indicating the disease and they are given the information to other person and transferring that person that that decision to any other person clear another type of devices they are collecting the devices through sensor and in the network protocol they are dumping that uh, in a cloud they are dumping that information and other type from the uh, doctor side or intelligent decision making system side they are taking a decision from the information they are extracting from the cloud and another side they are taking a decision or some devices are very costly okay like if you say uh, through mri you are doing but mri how you can take the mri mri data you can you have to go for hospital because mri data mri machine come in the crores so that time you required that information you the one center is required but in that particular center they will take the data and the data will they will send to the doctors got it so there are two type of systems one immediately they are taking decision another they are taking a data and the data they are sending to the doctors clear for these type of devices if they are the devices are very costly and sensor is uh, very costly so from that you have to go for some uh, clinics but that clinic will send to the specialist doctor clear that information they will send to the doctor so there are different type of uh, sensors uh, we are not talking about the sensor but how the method can be developed so uh, there are certain uh, signal processing techniques are available so basically here we are uh, using the signal processing technique to extract information from the data that information will provide you or increase the accuracy or efficacy of the system clear and also reduce the uh, complexity of the system so there are certain type of signal processing methods are available like fast fourier transform as you already know this method fails if your data is non stationary in nature so another method came in the existence which is known as stft so stft will provide you time frequency localization where you need to select appropriate window by experimentally then you can fix that window there are some filtering methods also available where you need to select proper uh, filter coefficients wavelet transform wavelet transform use where you required to select mother wavelet and uh, that will provide the subbands and how many subbands is required that you need to find out experimentally another method is known as empirical wavelet transform which will provide you different type of bands by selecting different filter banks eqwt is method this from uh, the, here i am listed all the methods which are available in the signal processing methods all the decomposition method all the time frequency uh, Because time frequency representation method, all the methods I have listed, and all method having some pros and cons. Okay, so like flexible analytic wavelet transform, here we need to select tuning parameter and select uh, number of modes. Now uh, another method is uh, variational mode decomposition method, which is uh, generated from the noisy mode, 
and it, it having a mode mixing problem recurring uh, quantitative analysis which uh, uh, when the noise is present in the signal then the info the uh, performance will degrade another method is empirical mode decomposition which identify different frequency component but it do not have any mathematical background so there are certain type of signal decomposition method and signal it it can convert in the signal into a time frequency domain where we can extract more information about the signal clear up the question now the question is what type of method we should use this is the big question so based on the problem you need to identify which will provide you better information clear like here i am taking some example uh here we will go for some diagnostic technique and we will solve this problem so here we will see how this problem can be solved and how we can uh, get the uh, how we can get the performance of your method so like here there is a one problem which is known as sleep apnea okay so this is basically a sleeping disorder okay so the sleep apnea is the condition this is uh, when the uh, in a long time sustained sleep apnea event will come in that time you you are not able to breathe or your respiratory system will damage okay so whenever the sleep apnea this is the uh, sleep disorder so whenever the sleep apnea condition will come so that time it can indicate the that particular condition is coming clear but the patient in the sleeping mode so the problem why which particular vital sign which particular signal we need to take this is the first question for sleep apnea condition which particular signal we need to absorb observe so this is the first question so like first we need to find out for sleep apnea there is a one neurological problem or it can be cardiovascular disorder okay now either it is connected through the brain or it is connected to the heart got it so which particular organ which particular uh, organ you need to take care from during that disease that we need to find out first which particular sensor we need to take so like here we have find out eeg is <coughs> eeg based approach so they are proficiency in assisting in during the sleep quality and apnea disorder clear yeah. so eeg is electrical generate electrical activity of the brain and it is a valuable clinical tool for a different type of physiological and pathological states of the human brain so like but quantitative analysis is very difficult suppose if directly uh, if you go to the doctor and it will he will take your eeg so how when sleep apnea condition will come when you are sleeping so what we need to do either doctor will admit to you and it will take 24 hour or at that time when you are sleeping so 6 hours eeg then he will acquire then he will diagnose for apnea got it but this is visual inspection is very time consuming inaccurate complex judgment Sub, or it's human error also possible and also required trained professionals so these are the problem if you go for eeg based visual inspection doctor also can do but how he will do it will take 6 hour data of eeg then he will go for visualization clear then he will say you have a problem in sleep apnea got it which is very time consuming process and how it will go for real time this is the big challenge i think you have understood the problem okay doctor also can do but the problem is problem is when the doctor will go for the diagnosis of the disease he has to take 6 hour eeg and he have to absorb visually so th this is the problem and what is the what is the requirement of that particular patient in the night whenever the sleep apnea will come and it will inform to the family members or it will give some alarm 
that particular condition is coming and he required that some uh, uh, medicine okay so this is the this is the real situation that we required so what we need to do we need a develop the some device whenever the sleep apnea will come and it will indicate to that person or the family member or caregiver it will indicate ki the person that particular uh, 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 disease is coming okay so now the question is how we can develop this type of devices so the first we required data how we got the data without data you cannot go for the development of any uh, devices clear so the first we required the data how you will get the data for this i am just i am just taking a example how you can solve the problem how you can try to develop your system okay so the first is the data how you will get the data so data you can like in there are two type of system one is known as pathological system second one is known as physiological system in india physiological data you can develop yourself for solving some problem clear but if you want to go for pathological problem so you have to collaborate with the hospital but in india no hospital is going to give you the access because they don't have time they are only looking for different aspects clear so this is the big challenge now maybe the new new education policy they will merge the med, uh, medical science and technology then uh, this problem can be solved but right now this is the big challenge for india so we are dependent on the we are depend on the different type of hospitals the uh, foreign there are different type of hospital those are taking a data and they are freely they are providing the data they are dumping the data in the cloud or they are dumping the data in any server so there is a one mi physionet atm if in google if you write the physionet atm so there is a one atm is come where you will get the different type of databases clear that particular thing is uh, maintained by mit usc okay from that you can take the data clear so the data for this for whatever problem you want to solve for that you need to extract the data from that physionet atm maybe the data is available so you can take that data if data is not available then you have to search out which hospital having the data but in a, a, a different type of hospital those are the very famous uh, hospital like born university in germany they have lot of databases so there are some hospitals they are they having a databases but indian hospital do not provide you database this is the problem in indian hospital clear so from that you first you need to take data clear for which problem you want to solve clear up now the data as we already seen the apnea have two type of data we required either you can go for eeg or you can go for ecg so like i have chosen a eeg clear so now after that from the data we have two type of conditions sometime it will be multiple condition if you are going for diagnosis then there is a two type of condition means now we have a data where of the normal person normal eeg and apnea patient data so like here i will show you this is the data is level where this information is available in that particular database like the data is from the 16 percent the sampling frequency is 256 hertz and epoch length is 30 second here we have 1195 normal eeg and 947 apnea eeg signals clear so this database we have extracted from the physionet clear physionet atm clear after that we need to process the data and we need to develop some device okay so after that we have gone through the different type of methods then we have applied emd clear so emd is a method which is suitable for non stationary signal processing signal uh, analysis it's a adaptive meter method data dependent method 
it does not require any condition like you need to does not require to select any basis function clear and it will provide a narrow band amfm component means this will divide your data into a different set of bands clear so how this uh, you can go in the detail also i can tell you the detail also uh, but here simply you can understand ki uh, how you will get the frequency component for sinusoidal you will get one frequency component so what we need to do we need to decompose a signal into a such a such a way so that you will get narrow band amfm component clear so now when you will say the signal is imf the complete data set number of extrema and number of zero crossing must be same or differ at most by one or mean value of envelope defined by the local maxima and local minima is zero then only you can say that this method like here i will give you the demonstration so like this is your signal now you extract the maxima then interpolate this maxima minima then interpolate this minima then the average will be pink one but average is not zero if this average is zero then you can say that your signal having a stationary in nature and you can extract some frequency component but this data is a non stationary nature so it has different frequency component and we don't know <coughs> during the apnea which particular band will be useful so what we need to do we need to decompose a signal into a different band so that's why we are using emd method so after this method this pink line is the reminder that we will subtract from the original signal then the signal again we will check the same thing again this pink line means reminder is not zero then again we will subtract from this then the one condition will come then your reminder will that uh, mean will be zero whenever your mean is zero or near to zero then you can say that this is your first im clear then this first im if you can extract from the original signal then whatever remaining you are getting from that you need to extract different type of imfs so imf basically have different type of bands clear now after this process your signal is decomposed into a different band you can see here like here we got 12 imfs clear now this is your first imf second time third time here you can say that first imf having a high frequency component as compared to other imfs so as the imf is increasing your frequency is reducing clear means first imf having a high frequency as compared to 12th imf or other 11th imf clear so um, now we don't know in apnea which particular band is responsible clear and which having a more information of apnea because direct eeg if you process direct eeg then it will it will produce a wrong information or you cannot extract that particular feature where these two classes can be classified that's why we required decomposition where we will decompose a signal into a different bands clear after that we will extract some features from these band like here i have uh, find out some features so like here i am showing instantaneous frequency and uh, envelope so like here i have very small very uh, known features which already you know like what will be the range of the signal mean absolute deviation of the signal inter quartile range coefficient of variance and standard deviation these five features i have extracted from the imfs like first imf i have five second imf like previously we have thousand signal for each signal we will process we will decompose a signal then we will extract these features clear so all signal is decomposed by the 12 imf then from each imf we have extracted these features five features clear then we have gone through for krusker bolus test based on that we have identify ki first four imf is only useful other imf is not useful first Uh, five six imf is useful others are not useful 
then what we have done we have given these imf features as a input to this classifier so there are nowadays there are so many machine learning algorithms is available which particular algorithm will give you the better accuracy that every method you need to apply every method have their pros and cons so which particular method will give you the better classification that you need to identify so here you have to apply machine learning algorithms so like here i but machine i i will give you the basic idea how machine learning algorithm is working how we can give the input what will be the input of that machine learning algorithm this idea i will give you like for example you have a chosen any algorithm of machine learning like here we have chosen lssbm classifier clear so what will be the input of this machine learning algorithm now first we will think what we have we have around 2000 signal from the 1100 from the uh, healthy or 900 around the apnea clear so 1100 signals we have decomposed into a different bands clear 900 also we have decomposed into a different bands from each uh, that bands known as imf and each from each imf i have taken a five features clear so if we talk about in a first imf so first imf we have 1100 cross 5 matrix for normal and 900 cross 5 for apnea hope you have understood because we have taken a five features this is database for first imf the same we have for second imf third imf fourth imf up to 12 imf clear so what we will do first we will check for only first imf what will be the classification accuracy for first imf whatever features we have extracted from this features for first imf what will be the accuracy clear so what will be the input this will be known as features matrix which will be 200 cross 5 where 1100 belongs to one class and 900 belongs to another class clear so that is known as input feature set now the 1100 is belonging to one class and 900 is belonging to another class so for one class we will put 1 1 1 1 another class we will put minus 1 minus 1 clear this will be your input this will be your feature set for any classifier clear now according to your classifier you need to select some parameter like kernel function here we need to select kernel function or its parameter like here the radial basis function i have chosen or sigma will be the width of that radial basis function clear for experimentally you need to fly, find out the value of sigma so what do you can do you can go for the optimization algorithm or you can go for increasing the or decreasing the value of sigma by experimentally and you can find out the accuracy of that method now what will happen now how this classifier is working so classifier having a three things one is the training second one is the learning third one is the testing clear training means whatever data you are providing as a input in this classifier what data you have provided you have provided to 2000 cross 5 matrix which is your feature set and another matrix this will be the output training set where you are telling first 1100 belong to one class and 900 is belonging to another class which is minus 1 clear this you will give as a input to your classifier now after that classifier will plot this into a five five dimension plane then it will find out the hyperplane hyperplane means this is the classification boundary got it classification boundary means the boundary which having a which can divide your data into a different two classes clear so now there are two thing training means we are providing the data learning means based on the data classifier making a that hyperplane so that second process is known as learning third is known as testing ab after training the data you have to test your whether you have done properly or not so for that you have to go for testing okay 
so how you will test your data for 10 for 10 percent you have to test your data means 90 percent of the data you need to use as a input and 10 percent data you can use for the testing and you need to match your result if whatever signal you are given the same output you are getting or not based on that you can find out performance parameter of your method clear so like these are the performance parameter like sensitivity, specificity, or accuracy. Okay, so this method you need to use cross validation. Uh, what do you mean by the cross validation? Cross validation means the data you have that you need to divide into a ten parts. Clear? Nine parts you can use for training, and one part you can use for testing. Then you find out what is the accuracy. Clear? This process you need to do 10 times means second time other nine part you need to use for training and 10 percent you will use for testing this process you will do 10 times then you need to find out average classification accuracy that is known as 10 cross -way. why you have done this because sometime your model will be overtrained overtrained means for 90 percent data you are using training that hundred percent will give you the class that ten, the ten percent you are using for testing that will give you hundred percent. But other data may be having a problem and it is not give you the better classification accuracy. So this way you are checking your whole data. It will give you the better accuracy. Ki what will be the accuracy of your system? That's why we go have to go for cross validation process. Clear? So that the actual accuracy you can find out. Clear? So these are the parameters. So like here, we have done some cross curve Wallace test. Then this is the result will come. When I have applied first IMF, that time I'm getting 95% accuracy. When we have done for second IMF, then I am getting 93.2 G. Then IMF 3, I am getting 95. IMF 4, I'm getting 87. IMF 5, I'm getting 80. IMF 6, I'm getting 80. Means the number of I, when the IMF is increasing, our accuracy is goes decreasing. Clear? So this is performance parameter. What we can conclude from this table? The first IMF having a capability to classify 95% of the data. This method have capability. 90%, 95%, it is able to classify normal and apnea. Clear? So this way you can prove what will be the accuracy of your method. Then you can compare with the other methods are available in the, in the same database. Because you are taking a benchmark database. So there are certain type of algorithm which people previously having previously using that uh, data. So like I have compared with ECG, EEG, other whatever those have used the data. So I have compared and our method is providing a 95% classification accuracy. Clear? After when the things was developed, then you need to, once your data, once your all things, you have checked it, then this you need to import in your hardware. Clear? Where you have a, from this sensor, you are taking the same thing you have to do. Clear? Now, after that, you need to go for hardware. This is just a, you can go for the software. But when you will go for the hardware, the same thing you need to develop in the hardware. So nowadays, Raspberry Pi, Arduino Uno, there are certain type of hardware where you can uh, export your software, means whatever code you have making, that code you can uh, dump in your hardware. Like in FPGA, FPGA, what do you do? In FPGA, you are making a code in Verilog or VSDL or Verilog. Clear? And you are dumping that code into a FPGA. Clear? Nowadays, once the algorithm is ready, that algorithm you can develop in a Python. That Python, the Raspberry Pi or Arduino Uno will support that Python. Clear? Once the system is ready, then you have to go for real-time check. Clear? 
कि वेदर इन रियल टाइम सिचुएशन ऑल्सो गिवेन नाइनटी फाइव परसेंट और नॉट दैट यू नीड टू चेक आउट क्लियर अनदर सेम प्रॉब्लम आई हैव सॉल्व इन अनदर वे ऑल्सो लाइक देयर इज अ वन मेथड विच इज नोन एज हर्मिट डिकम्पोजिशन मेथड हियर वी नीड टू सिलेक्ट डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ पैरामीटर्स क्लियर फॉर डिकम्पोजिंग अ डेटा so what i have done because for every signal we have to select p and k where k is the order and p is the dilation factor so what we have done we have come up with the new algorithm where does not required to select the value of k and p we have done optimization algorithm automatically k and p will select how we have done it so like here this is your signal we have decomposed through hermit decomposition then we have make a some optimization function based on the optimization for each signal automatically they will select the value of order and then once you you are able to find out the correct value of k and p by using evolutionary algorithm then this value you can use
and welcome back to our uh, second session for day two. Let us resume towards our next session, which is based on heart rate monitoring from non-contact phase videos. And for that, it is now my privilege to introduce Dr. Puneet Gupta from IIT Indore. Dr. Puneet Gupta is currently working as an assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Indian Institute of Technology, Indore. Prior to that, he was a postdoctoral researcher at Tampere University, Finland, where he worked to make the deep learning architectures more secure and reliable to increase their applicability in real world applications. Before that, he was a member of the machine vision group in embedded methods and robotics, TCS research and innovation. His work in the group mainly focused on improving the efficacy of remote heart rate estimation and exploring its application area like human expression understanding. Dr. Gupta received his doctoral degree from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, India in the year 2016. Moreover, he received the B.Tech degree in Computer Science and Engineering from the Enterprise University in first class with distinction in the year 2009. He is working to make the current technology useful for human beings by analyzing their behavior. His area of research includes effective com uh, computing, computer vision and deep learning. He has published several papers in the reputed international journals, including IEEE transactions on effective computing, IEEE transactions on industrial electronics and computers in biology and medicine, and international conferences, including IEEE International Conference on Computer Vision, IEEE Winter Conference on Applications of Computer Vision, and Annual International Conference of the IEEE Engineering in Medicine and Biology Science. With a long list of his achievements and glory, I would like to invite upon a stage Dr. Puneet Gupta, sir. Please put the light on the topic heart rate monitoring from non contact phase videos. Welcome to you, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, all of you. So, today I am going to discuss or uh, throw some light on this topic which is non-contact face videos using, I mean, remote PPG, which is nothing, I mean, another word of saying heart rate estimation using non-contact face videos. So basically it is called remote PPG. Uh, so let's begin with understanding what exactly heart rate is. Before moving forward, I have just a couple of requests from you. One of uh, my request is, uh, I request all of you to kindly mute yourself because I think some noises are continuously being heard off. And my second request is, uh, whenever you face that you are not understanding anything, I mean something, whatever I am talking, it's not completely understandable to you. Or there is some question that is there in your mind or any idea that you want to share, kindly don't type it in the chat box because since my focus is mainly on the PPT, I'm unable to see the text right now. So at that point, please unmute and ask the questions. Otherwise, in the end, there will be a pile of doubts. Right? Yes, sir. And so sir, just... if possible, you can uh, on your mm -hmm. camera also. Yeah, just give me one sec. Uh, I am doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is my camera visible, I suppose? Yes, sir, it is visible now. Yeah, great. I think there are still two text messages. Let me see anything, any doubt. Can I? Not for me. Yeah, so I was talking about, let's first discuss what is what does it mean when I'm talking about heart rate. So in very simple words, heart rate is nothing but number of times your heart beats per 60 seconds. Just give me one more sec. Yeah, number of times your heart beat per 60 seconds. So do remember this thing. It's pretty much important, which we people are often neglecting. That it is taking this amount of time. That yeah, how much time your heart beat per 60 seconds. Now, hopefully most of us know that yeah, how we can perform the heart rate monitoring. There are various techniques for this purpose. Basically, these are categorized as invasive and non-invasive techniques. As the name indicates, invasive. Invasive just means that something is put inside your body. So one such technique is cardiac catheterization, where what happened is some flexible tube is put inside the body 
and then by using that your heart rate or uh, activity your cardiac activity or your heart rate is monitored and then there is few more categorizations mainly in the non invasive techniques so in non invasive technique when i am talking about there can be two uh, such categorization obstructive versus non obstructive contact versus contact lens on obstructive sensing on obstructive sensing means that you can perform the continuous monitoring and as an example you can use variables or some sensors that is embedded in the environment so that's non obstructive ways so we are going to heard these words quite often in these domain so that's why i'm actually covering it at the very start and then the next categorization can be contact versus contactless mechanism once again as the name indicate it just says that whether there is a proper contact between the sensor and the human body if it is we call it contact mechanism otherwise contactless mechanism so for instance variables that we mainly use today they support contact mechanism now yep any doubt ha huh. okay yeah so basically i hope most of us are aware of these three heart rate estimation devices first one is ecg second one is ppg and third one is variables ecg and this what happens there is a huge sensor that is there and there are few electrodes that is coming out from it and those electrodes are placed at different body parts so as to make that yeah somehow electrical activity of the heart can be recorded by these electrodes other thing is that here there is a proper skin contact is required between the human skin and these electrodes then there is this ppg also known as photoplethysmogram which is somewhat i think we mostly are familiar with that in this difficult covid situations we have seen that clipping kind of device that we can put in finger or on ear lobe to find out how our heart is beating right so there are once again there is two phenomena the phenomena is that here we have this pulse of i mean this pulse oximeter device then on one side here we have ir light and red light and on other side we have leds so the purpose of these yellow leds is this that you throw some light then those lights will be traveled from the human finger and at the other end it would be received so based on that we can find out that how your blood is changing so the continuous lights is been thrown and then continuous blood variations is been observed basically to figure it out that yes how your heart is beating what we do we try to figure it out our blood variations why because once again when our heart beat it contracts it exerts some pressure and then when it expands then it the pressure is loosened up so that's how there is this uh, blood variations that has been introduced and our aim here is to just somehow gather those information similarly there is another uh, way which is variable again either it uses this pulse oximeter kind of phenomena this principle that i have talked to you or it can use pressure sensors because as there is this as i'm saying whenever there is heart beat some pressure is exerted so that blood can flow so these two techniques are mainly used by variables so now let's understand first of all the pros and cons of this ecg ppg and variable and as far as this fourth technique that i'm talking about this one let's discuss this in the end but first of all let's understand what is the problem with these techniques as far as ecg ppg and variable are concerned all three of them what they require they require some proper skin contact so that means it is not feasible to analyze or to monitor the cardiac activity or this heart rate for skin damage patients because you cannot actually have the privilege that there is a proper skin con there is a proper contact between sensor and human skin or if there is a patient because otherwise it would be pretty much um, i mean it will add up to the uncomfortness of 
the patient. Same thing is with sleep. Or when a person is performing exercise, then also it's not yeah feasible to actually maintain a proper contact between these devices and human skin. <coughs> Sorry. And last one can be neonates. So neonates means newborns, infants. So once again, we cannot actually put sensors on them because otherwise they can actually mess with mess up with those sensors. So for all these cases, ECG, PPG, and variables are not that much affected. Other problem with ECG is this is this that it is quite bulky and expensive. Even though PPG and variables are not that much bulky, but I hope we all are on the same page when I say that ECG, PPG, and variable they all require some dedicated sensors. Dedicated sensors like ECG, they require proper machine, electrodes, PPG. They require pulse oximeter, variables. Once again, it requires some devices, some pulse oximeter kind of devices or pressure sensors. This is once again a problem with these devices. And lastly, as far as this ECG and PPG are concerned, we cannot use them for performing long-term monitoring. In contrast, thankfully, for variables, we can perform somehow long-term monitoring. So these are some pros and cons of ECG, PPG, and variables. And now I'm going to talk about this fourth technique on which I'm working on, also known as RPPG, remote PPG, or to be very specific, heart rate monitoring using non-contact face videos. So here what happened is the idea is simple. Somehow you take a face video face video somewhat non-contact why because there is no skin contact between your camera and the human skin or human facial skin so that's why there is this word non-contact somehow you take up this video that somehow can be you can use any sensor you can use even surveillance camera or you can use the camera that is there in your mobile and thankfully the current scenario is this that mobile is ubiquitous possessed by everyone and with yeah some decent camera installed on in it is present in it so that's what you do you take up that face video analyze that somehow and figure it out what is your heart rate monitoring for few of me it may seems that how would be that would be possible so we will go through with their principles and how we can do it and find out that mathematical formulations how we can actually design those things and design such a system but for the time being, assume if we have such a privilege that we can gather these non contact based videos and find out the heart rate monitoring. So where we can use it, what is going to be its pros and cons? So first, let's see what are the pros and cons and then we will see what are the possible applications that we can look for. So if we have such a mechanism, then as far as skin contact is concerned, we can easily say, yeah, it does not require any skin contact. And yeah, similarly, we can easily use it for performing long-term monitoring. We just need to hang, let's say some camera, let's say a surveillance camera on top. The patient is there set, uh, lying in, uh, on the bed below your camera such that its face is visible and that's it. You can actually monitor it, it, the patient's cardiac activity. Other good part is often it does not require any dedicated sensor. By this, I mean that we can use even simple mobile camera that is there with us. And as I just said, it is quite ubiquitous nowadays. So in that sense, it does not require any dedicated sensor. Other good part is since it avoids any skin contact, so yeah, definitely we can use it in this difficult COVID situation. And in telehealth care, telehealth care means where there you don't require any skin contact between the sensors or the patient and uh, you can say the doctor. So that's telehealth care. Or let's say you are there on the uh, online mode and like I'm presenting, I'm giving a lecture. Maybe there is patient on one end and doctor on the other end. We can, there is this uh, prescription and everything going on. So in all these, you see, this is how you should take the medication and everything. yeah so what i was saying uh, yeah i was just saying yeah 
that uh, this is how this thing is being actually going on. So same thing, people are extensively working on. There is companies like Atria, they are actually trying to actually simulate that same system using this RPPG technique. Wherein you don't need a, a sensor contact between your vision sensor and your this human skin. So with this, I hope I have motivated you a lot that yeah, how this technique works. Now let's see, I mean, applications we have seen. Now let's see how this technique actually works. What is actually the first of all principle? Is it really possible, feasible? Is there any justification that yeah, it should happen? So there is this underlying principle on which this technique is based. The principle is quite simple. So whenever your heart beats, as I just I mean, as I said, so when your heart beats, let's say it's contract. So, and when it uh, expands, so there is this blood pumping in your body. So overall, this heartbeat information is present in your blood flow variation. So in PPG, what we do, we take up the skin contact and then Color and results in slight head motion. So why there is this color, uh, facial color variation? See, behind the human skin, there is a network of arteries on which blood is continuously flowing. Right. So once again, blood will be, I mean, this light will be thrown on the face. Some of them would be absorbed by the blood. Then it would be reflected. All those things would happen. And then we can actually look up that reflected light and see that how the color is changing. But the problem here is that this facial color change is so subtle that we cannot actually use, I mean, we actually cannot, yeah, it's latent if you consider it from the eye perspective. Thankfully, we can use camera sensors to find out those color variations. We will see how we can use, how we can analyze them. Then other phenomena is your head motion. So facial color change, we can expect, yeah. So behind skin, we have huge network. Yeah, so where I am, I, I was just saying why there is this head motion. So there is this keratoid artery that is actually flowing. So due to this, what exactly has happened is it exerts some upward force. Then your phase, I mean, there is this Newton's third law that for every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. Or observed from the human eye. But thankfully, once again, we can use cameras. In very simple words, we take up video frames. Okay, uh, is it possible to actually mute the sound? Can anyone answer? Okay. So, yeah, we have videos. So what we do, we take a few frames, call it a window, analyze those frames, 
and find out one heart rate value. Then we move to next frames, take up that window, find out the heart rate corresponding to it, call it the another one. So likewise, let's say there is this uh, 1000 frames, we divide it into some overlapping windows of let's say 300. generate a huge amount of variations on the face. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, sir uh, we are very sorry. Actually, there is some problem in our centralized system. Because of that mm -hmm. uh, recording in progress, that message is coming again and again. Sorry, sir. Okay. Uh, next no, time it won't happen. Yes, sir. No, no. I do understand because actually my flow and everything got previously yes, it's so huge that I forgot everything Yapa, I was talking about. Yes. Yeah, but no worries, I understand it happens. Yeah. So yeah, I was just uh, saying that there is this eye blinking and facial expressions, even it introduces a huge variations on the face, right? And our aim is to find out about the subtle variations. So definitely, whatever we are getting at these due to these can be easily erroneous. We can misinterpret and provide wrong results. Other thing can be camera parameters. A very simple example let me give you for this. So we see, I mean, that's a very common phenomena that we take up a mobile camera for taking uh, videos of some scene. At the initial time, what happened is there is some blurring that is there. Or let's say if there is some light that we have on for a particular time, due, at that time also there is some blurring. So why that was the case? Again, because at that time our camera is not enough focus. So it takes some time so that our camera can, can focus on a particular scene. So those are actually what I meant from camera sensor. I mean camera parameters. Well, camera sensors, so it's like there is some noise that we can all, I mean, it's inevitable. We definitely have some noise while we are uh, acquiring some scene. Then there can be environmental factors, or you can say we can have illumination factors. Let's say we, uh, I'm there inside a park, then at some place, some huge light is coming on my face, at other, it's not. So there is, even due to where the light is coming, there is huge variations. All those sectors, all those challenges that is persisting in this technique that can actually deteriorate your performance. And now we can also, uh, I would uh, uh, like to tell you about these two variations, spatial and temporal variations, which you will uh, heard in this technique quite often. One is spatial, another one is temporal. So in very simple words, I'm talking about videos consisting of, let's say, some number of frames. So if I take up one frame, whatever variations or analysis that I can perform in that frame only, I call it spatial variation. However, temporal means, temporal means time. So how your I mean, variations are there across your time, across and different frames. So we call it temporal variations. Right. So these are the two variations that we can actually look for. I mean, in this technique, mainly our focus will be on temporal variations. Right. So before moving forward, let me actually show you a demo to actually provide you what I meant by facial color variation and head motion variations. So probably that can actually clarify that, yeah, this technique's basic, I mean, really works. So let me show you this demo. Yeah, in this demo, on the extreme left, there is this input video. So now what I do is I take up that video, analyze that, okay, there we have some color variations. I magnify them, put it back on the video and the resultant is there in the middle video. Similarly, in the once again, in the actual video, I take up, find out the motion, 
this y motion y motion in y direction i was talking about magnify that put it in the video and the resultant is there in the rightmost video so kindly do analyze them and see so hopefully by this video we can figure it out that yes on the extreme left where we have this original video finding out this motion variation color variation it's not at all feasible for us but there are and once we magnify it them then we can somehow observe them then we i mean we can visualize it from our eyes but definitely this is just for this visualization purpose i am not going to i mean i am going to definitely take these variations analyze them but i am not going to magnify them and put it back this is just for your reference for visualization yeah great then so now once again my focus is on either finding this color i mean analyzing this motion variation or color variation motion once again finding out how my face i mean what are the motion <coughs> in y direction color variation means how the color is changing so often we actually have this two kind of perspective to say about this color and motion magnification first one is lagrangian perspective here what we do we take up a face video we take a find out discriminatory fa facial landmark points discriminatory points we track them we first find out and explicitly track them over time but it's really highly timing time consuming and they are mostly only few discriminatory points that are available we need to pour lightning and often we try to neglect let's say eye regions and so and other regions which are pretty much prominent or our facial boundary because they are easily affected by facial expression or eye blinking so that again we will see but yeah it has this problem that it's easily affected by facial expression then there is another perspective known as alien perspective here what we do we fix some roi and see how the color or, uh, or how the variations are introduced in that particular roi across time once again here also we are time talking about temporal variation only so the good thing is here we avoid time consuming tracking and it works pretty much accurately for small variations and this indeed is our case we want subtle variations only nevertheless just like lagrangian perspective it do have these problems that it can be affected by poor illumination in our perpet camera focus and everything that we have seen right so probably there is this question that i can ask you right now that which of these eilerian or lagrangian perspective belong to color magnification or motion magnification so the answer can be can anyone wants to try okay so lagrangian perspective belongs to your motion magnification i mean it analyzes the motion in contrast your alien perspective is mainly concerned with your color variations so now let's now make ourselves i mean hopefully i and hope all of us are comfortable by now what is heart rate and what kind of system we want what we expect and everything now let's see how we can actually do that so first of all i'm just giving you a very a broad introduction that these are the steps that we need to follow how these steps are i mean can we perform we will see later because based on this we can see by changing only i mean one or two steps new results uh, or new papers have come up so we will see in the upcoming slides how these question marks how these each steps has been performed but for the timing first of all let's understand yeah this is what we need to actually accomplish first the first step is given a face video what we do we first extract a window what does it mean as i just told you here initially we are going to have a full full face video we take up few, few contiguous frame find out the heart rate let's say the corresponding heart rate is h1 the corresponding heart rate is h1 
then we take another overlapping window with this green one analyze it call it h2 so in the end if i have n such windows i am going to have n values of heart rates so that's by analyzing them i i mean these heart rates it provides me heart rate monitoring heart rate estimation is just this you take up a window analyze what is the heart rate in it that's heart rate estimation estimating heart rate in a window heart rate monitoring means given a video divide into small 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 wind, uh, clips analyze each clip find out the heart rate and usually i hope let's say if you have uh, looked for this ppg or your variable so you see continuous change in your heart rates these values so that's your actually heart rate monitoring what you do it analyzes your heart rate for a very short duration of time take those signal for a very short duration of time that's what we are also doing it here so now first step is window extraction after that what we do we take up the first frame and divide it into region of interest ROIs so what do you mean by ROI in my case i want to estimate the heart rate by analyzing facial skin regions so roi here is i take up the facial region and that to those that belong to my skin here often we neglect the eye regions because they are easily affected by eye blinking and there are various various ways to actually use different different rois choose different different rois and so on but definitely this is the second step third step is corresponding to each roi you find out a temporal signal so to make this thing easy to understand assume that i have extracted a window of 300 frames 300 frames and the number of rois that i have is let's say 50 are region of interest so how many temporal signals i am going to have corresponding to each temporal signal corresponding to each roi i am going to have one temporal signal so i am going to have 50 temporal signals here then how the temporal signal is formed so this is what we do we take up this frame let i mean we take up this block let's say i am talking about this block i take up the location of this block put it onto the first frame that okay this is lying here okay take the variations here convert it into somehow a scalar one probably you can use average red or something else average gray scale anything so converting those values those color that lies here into one value put it then look for the another frame at the same location take up those color values convert into a scalar put it and that's how you are going to have 300 such values because you have 300 frames so that represents your one temporal signal your 300 values so overall now you can figure it out that your size is going to be 50 cross 300 across 300 or you can say each temporal signal is a one dimensional signal of 300 size then these temporal signals that you have extracted there is can be this problem that there are facial expression that really deteriorates that as an instance consider that when a person is smiling so what happened so when a person is smiling region of interest belonging to the lip regions or the areas that are near to lip regions they may contain those variations so somehow we perform another uh, step here known as adaptive selection which somehow figure it out that yeah possibly these are those temporal signals that may be affected by facial expressions and you remove them then whatever remaining signals you have you take them up analyze them extract out the cardiovascular pulse then from this pulse you find out your heart rate using f50 and finding maximum this step also we will see how and yeah so corresponding to one window you have one heart rate value so again you repeat this for another window get the second so that's what you do here so overall this is a broad picture of how this technique should work these steps are mainly inevitable in any of the mechanism in any of the proposed system that we can look for so these steps we will see i think it's this good afternoon everyone welcome back 
I hope you have enjoyed your meals. So let us take up again with our next, next technical session, which is based on role of IoT to fight against COVID-19. And I would like to continue this session with Dr. Jasleen Kaur. Kaur. Dr. Jasleen Kaur is scientist at ICMR. And uh, Dr. Jasleen Kaur is working as a scientist too in HTA in Secretariat Indian Council of Medical Research, ICMR, New Delhi. She has spent close to four years as a PhD research scholar under the project MEC2 funded by Microsoft Mobile University Relations, Finland, and close to one year as an assistant professor at Maharshi Markandeshwar University, Mullana. She has completed her PhD in Computer Science and Engineering from IGDT UW, New Delhi in 2021, MTech in Computer Science and Engineering in 2013, and BTech in Computer Science and Engineering from Kurukshetra University in 2011. She is presently working on the design and development of customizable web-based and desktop API for the interoperability uh, of antimicrobial resistance data, development of COVID-19 testing data, APIs, web API for automation of computational workflow of genomic analysis, and standalone software development with automation of COVID-19 genome assembler pipeline. She is also involved in writing the BioPython based generic script for the biologist. She has published 15 research papers in Refer General and presented six research papers in national and international conferences and published four Indian patents. She has attended more than 10 national workshops and short term courses on IoT enabled smart devices organization in collaboration with Microsoft, Intel, and DIC MHRD. She has delivered expert lectures in national webinar on IoT and in short term course on IoT at NITTTR Chandigarh. We are happy to inform you that recently Dr. Jasleen is selected for postdoctorate fellow position in the University of Waterloo, Canada. Congratulations, ma'am, for your selection. And uh, it will be my honor um, to invite Dr. Jasleen Kaur for her intellectual words. Oh, <laughs> Okay, ma'am. Uh, now you can start. And I think it is uh, nearly morning in Canada, right? Yeah, it, it is 4 a.m. in the Canada. Oh, it's too early. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Just, Justine, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Vikas. Welcome. So uh, let me start with my presentation. I'm just sharing the screen. Yes, ma'am. So I hope my screen is visible to everyone. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, ma okay, fine. So uh, I'm not wasting the time. Let's start with the presentation. Uh, so as Dr. Viba have introduced regarding me that I'm Dr. Jasleen working as a scientist too with the IC, working was scientist too with an ICMR. So currently I'll present on the role of IoT in COVID-19. So this will be my agenda. First, I'll cover with the what is basic the uh, IoT, what is the Internet of Things, and uh, what is basically the role of IoT uh, to fight against this COVID-19, and um, uh, how the Python is playing a great role in IoT uh, for healthcare. And uh, at, at last, definitely, I will uh, or like I will overview the different IoT projects and the case studies in which I am working. So first, I'll start that uh, what is IoT? Like what is the Internet of Things? What are the impact of the IoT in the different application areas and the basic components of the IoT devices? What are the different components to build an IoT device? And what are the different IoT devices? And what are the different existing operating systems for the IoT device? So uh, let me start with IoT that uh, you might all know that IoT is basically Internet of Things. So Internet of Things, it combines of the two words that is an Internet and the things. Internet is basically the network of the networks or the medium through which the devices are connected. And the things we can say that it can be any object or it, the intelligence that basically uh, that basically connect to the Internet means uh, uh, these objects can be the embedded that can be a so, uh, embedded with a software 
software or it can be embedded with the hardware. So it is a combination of basically the two words that is an internet and the things. So uh, you can uh, see in the picture on the right hand side that what was before IoT and what was the after IoT, like what was the need of the IoT? What was the difference between the before IoT and after IoT? Like the difference was that uh, before IoT, you have to run from machine to machine, telling them that what to do for you. And uh, but with IoT, we can say that the devices can interact with each other. They can collaborate with each other and they can even learn from each other experiences. Even the machines can be connected to each other and can be pre-instructed that what to do and when to do. So this is a basic difference before IoT and after IoT. And that was a need, um, like which was the need for the IoT. So in the in our, uh, like in our everyday life, the IoT can be connected from the Fitbits, from vehicles, from smartphones, from home lightning, home appliances, personal computers, online shopping, everything in our daily life, it is connected with the IoT. So this is basically the IoT device development application areas. As we all know that the smart device technology is rising.